and this is most people's first opportunity to actually have a look at this camera. We've done a few technology announcements for it, but here it is, it's actually here. Hello, um, my name is Dave Parry, um, I'm from Canon UK, and I'm here at the photography show, and I've got the brand new EOS R3. Looking at it, you can see it actually looks not too dissimilar to our one series cameras. Um, and this is deliberate, because the idea of this camera is for people who are used to using the one series type product, but want to really experience the best of mirrorless. They want to see what mirrorless can do for them and for their photography. So this is a real hybrid, it sort of brings those two pieces of technology together. And what we've noticed, what's great, is if you're used to using a one series camera, if you pick this up and put it to your face, what you find is all the buttons are in the same place. So the muscle memory on how you use the camera is um, has stayed the same. So you haven't got to learn how to use a new camera. Uh, the top plate looks a sort of hybrid of, um, saying hybrid again, between the, um, the one series and the R5. So it's got the sort of mode dial here on the R5. Looking around the outside, outside of the camera here, you've got a lot of ports here for connection. You've got um, Ethernet on here, you've got the, the HDMI, you've got um, USB-C um, on here as well. So you've got a lot of connection connectivity. You've got mic input, you've got headphone input as well. If I go around onto the other side here, you've got the card slot, dual card slot. You've got um, CF Express Type-B and you've got an SD card slot on here as well. And then the battery inside it, it's a humongous battery. It's the um, LPE19 which is the same battery that goes inside the 1DX. Um, now officially we're quoting somewhere in the region of um, uh, uh, 800 shots per charge, but I have to say I've got a lot more shots on this camera than, than that, which is fantastic. Looking at the back of it, you've got a variable angle screen, so fully artic articulating variable angle screen here. First variable angle screen on a camera of this type. Uh, normally the 1 Series have that, um, uh, like a, you know, just a, a non-moving screen on the back. The R5 and so on have the variable angle, but now we've got this on here. So it's so useful if you do video shooting or if you want to shoot above people's heads or low down shooting. You've got that, you've got that flexibility there. Last thing to mention about the outside, I think, um, is we've got the new hot shoe on the top here. Um, which is a, um, a new multi-function shoe, we're calling it. But don't panic, it is the same size as a standard hot shoe, so your accessories will still fit. The difference is this one's got an extra 21 pins underneath this little cover here. And what this does, what this gives you, this gives you the ability to have a two-way communication between your accessory and the camera. Two things that's great with that. One is you can control the accessory from the camera. Second thing is that you can power the accessory from the camera. So no more hunting around for double A's or CR2032s or whatever they are. You can take that power from the, um, uh, from the camera itself. Okay, let's talk about the inside of the camera, what we've got in here. So we've got a brand new 24.1 million pixel sensor. Um, this is a stacked back illuminated sensor, um, which what you need to know about that, what's important about that is speed how fast the sensor is, about getting that information off through the processor and then onto the memory cards. We went for 24 million pixels because that gives you the best balance of um, resolution, as in your detail, low light capability and speed, and also um, file size as well, which is so important. You can imagine if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, you can burn through a memory card very, very quickly. So yeah, this gives the best balance of those together. And it is actually four million pixels more than the 1DX. So we have increased the resolution from that. So I mentioned about the 30 frames a second. That is 14-bit RAWs at 30 frames a second. Um, so that is a, you know, the full resolution. And also the autofocus will keep up with that. So you can do full auto exposure and autofocus at 30 frames a second. Uh, that's electronic shutter. You can also do 15 frames a second electronic shutter and you can do 12 frames a second mechanical shutter as well, depending on your shooting subject and this kind of thing. What you'll notice if you do shoot um, electronic shutter is the rolling shutter has been reduced as well, so that's got a lot better. So I mentioned about the AF system on here. Um, great way to think about it is like the R5, but next level. So it's got the same eye detection for animals, people, and all this kind of thing. We've also got vehicle detection on here as well. 
So it's been programmed to work with like, um, like saloon cars, rally cars, um, Formula One cars, open cockpit. It'll recognize helmets, full face helmets, which means it'll also work with motorcycles as well. Um, and those are the kind of vehicles that we've programmed this system to work with. Um, I've been making jokes about like, it might work for a JCB. I don't know, that is a vehicle, it might do. To be fair, they're pretty slow, so it probably will, but, um, but no, it's, it's about um, performance cars, it's about saloon rally cars, and GT cars, and all this kind of stuff. You see that we're, you know, we're targeting this towards like sport, action, and news gathering. Not to say it can't be used for wildlife photography and so on, but we're talking about sports and action um, because of this new AF system, which is quite exciting about this vehicle tracking. So another thing on the autofocus system, which is brand new on this camera, I say brand new, we did actually have a similar system quite a number of years ago on um, the, the film cameras, the R3, the R5, the R50, and I think there's another one, which is um, eye tracking. Now I'm not talking about eye tracking as in the camera recognizing the subject's eye, I'm talking about the camera recognizing your eye. So in the back here in the viewfinder, it's a humongous viewfinder on the back here, which is lovely. But what you're, um, what's, what's inside here are eight LEDs, which emit a low powered um, infrared beam. And you have to remember, Canon have got a huge medical vision. So we're using this technology in here to recognize the movement of your eye. And what this does, this allows you to control the AF point for that initial acquisition of your subject. So I've been using this for motor racing recently. And I had two cars coming around the corner, coming towards me. And if I wanted to photograph the car on the left, I would look at the car on the left and the autofocus point would go to that car. If I wanted to photograph the car on the right, I would look at the car on the right and the autofocus point would go, go to there. So instead of using the joystick, instead of using the screen to move the air points around, you are physically doing it with your eye. Very exciting. Um, you need to calibrate it. So you need to calibrate it for your eye because people's eyes are different, so the shape of their heads are different, all this kind of stuff. So you need to calibrate it. But once it's calibrated, it's a fantastic tool to help you move your AF points around. So predominantly, this is a stills camera, um, but we do have great video capability on here. Oh, this is actually the second camera of this type in our lineup to have to not have the 30 minute or 29 minute, 59 second um, uh, tax law on it. Um, the other one was the 1DC that we launched many years ago. Um, so this is this is great to like continuous shooting. Um, it's 6K, so it doesn't have 8K capability like the R5. The reason why it's not 8K is it doesn't have the pixel count. You need the 45 million to give you the 36 that you need for 8K. But this is 6K. You shoot 6K, you can do oversample 4K, um, you can do the low bit rates, you can do Canon Log, you can do um, uh, HDR PQ very similar to the R5 in the capabilities that you can do, the different bit rates and so on, um, but it's running at 6K. Now what we are saying, because this um, oversamples rather than line skips, the image quality could be better than what you get off the R5. And we are saying that the 4K 120 that you can do in here is should be of a better quality uh, than you get on the R5. So that's gonna be really interesting to test that out and, um, and see, what the, see what the differences are in the, in the real world. Um, Connectivity, Wi-Fi, blue, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS inside here, and it will look at the three different systems and satellites. As I mentioned just now, you've got like Ethernet port, um, you've got micro HDMI and so on. So it's a very, very connected camera. You can control this using the apps that the free apps that we have. Um, um, it's just a, it's a, you know, it's a, for the type of shooters we're aiming this at, who are going to shoot and they need to get these images off really quick and get them to news desks or whatever, this is going to be a fantastic product um, to, be able to, to be able to do that. So one of the things to mention about this is its low light capability as well. This is another benefit of having 24 million pixels rather than a, a higher pixel count. Um, and that is that the ISO capability is brilliant. So it's 204,800 if I remember correctly, which is the expanded ISO. And you might say, you know what, 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 you know, who's going to use that at that ISO? We're aiming this once again at news gathering. These guys will use these higher ISOs. So if it's a matter of getting that shot and not get, getting it, they don't mind a little bit of noise. But for me, what's exciting is shooting at like 1600 or 3200 or 4000 ISO basically all day long. The image quality is amazing at these ISOs. So um, yeah, so don't be scared of, of bumping, those, bumping those ISOs up. So one of the benefits of having a body of this size is its ability to dissipate heat. 
Now, with some of the other products that we've got, the components inside them are very close together, which means if you're doing things like, you know, shooting 4K 120 and this kind of thing for long periods of time, you can get a buildup of heat. Now, with this product, because it's so large, it has a massive uh, magnesium alloy body inside it, all the components are further apart, it means you can shoot for longer without that buildup of heat. So we're not giving the official shooting times as things stand at the moment, but this camera should be more about your memory card and the battery life than that buildup of heat within the product. So the R3 is fully integrated into our EOS system. Now, if you're using any EF lenses or anything like that, you can use it using our adapter. Now, the great thing about the adapter is that the camera will recognize that you're using an adapter and you're using an EF lens and will change the way that the camera talks to talk in the native language of the lens. The beauty of that is you get no drop in performance from that EF lens. So if you have an EF lens and you've got it on a, say, a 5D Mark IV, and then you put it on here, it'll perform the same as if you were using it on the 5D Mark IV. Now you won't get the added benefits of the fast autofocus from using genuine EF or using native lenses, but you won't get a drop in performance from that EF lens, which is fantastic because we've got what, 90, I'm sure someone will correct me, but I think we've got 92 lenses still available in EF and EFS and so on. And it's great to be able to use those, those lenses with this product. So the R3 is really well balanced with um, lenses like this. Obviously, I've got the, uh, the 1535 2.8 on here, and you've got like the 7200 f2.8 and that kind of thing. But because it's RF, you can fit any lens on there. We recently launched a little 16 millimeter. There you go. So that's what it looks like with a little 16 millimeter on there. It does feel quite different, but um, having that 16 mil, that is so so wide. It is a lovely lens, and it will work with it. And um, I don't think it looks silly at all. I think it looks quite um, it looks quite nice like that. <laughs> so this camera is all about speed, and one of the great things with this is that the, it is now blackout free. So when you're shooting through the viewfinder, you don't have that flash of a, um, a black screen, uh, which means that when you're tracking a fast moving subject, it's much more natural and just feels really nice to, to help you follow it. So the beauty of the cameras at this kind of level is how much you can customize it. So yes, the R5 is still our most customizable uh, camera. Is that a word? A customizable camera. Um, but this one comes a close second at the moment. It's around 70 different things that you can customize on here. And there's a lot of buttons that you can change. Um, the, the buttons on the front here, which people who have one series will be very familiar with, having these customized to do various different things is, is really, really useful. And obviously you've still got those buttons there if you're using the camera in the vertical orientation as well. So it's a very, very customizable button, but I still believe our most customizable camera is the R5.